Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of You Gotta Act, a podcast about actors and acting. Today my guest is French like me, what a relief, and it's Leo Soisanto. Thank you. <laughs> Hi Leo, thanks so much for joining us from Paris. From Paris, yeah. Paris indeed. Um, so Leo, you are a critic and a, can I say a TV personality or is that a bit much, but you're a critic on TV. <laughs> A guy on TV, yeah. I'm on TV. As it happens. Nic yeah, as this <laughs> Nicolas Cage said in Snake Eyes, I'm on TV. But... <laughs> exactly. Just yeah. like Nicolas Cage. Um, and today you chose to talk with me about the great actress Maggie Chung. Yeah. But before we get into that, can you tell us a bit about your journey through film and how you got to be where you're at now, which is talking to me about Maggie Chung? <laughs> Well, um, it's, uh, I'm here now like, in a position I was not supposed to be uh, as a film critic before I like, uh, before that I made some serious studies like uh, human resources management, um, politics, uh, like in this um, school called um, uh, Sciences Po in, uh, in Paris. Uh, like I know the equivalent school. of the yeah, like the equivalent of the London School of Economics, if I remember well. Uh, and so yeah, I mean, I didn't uh, when I was when I was a kid. I mean, I didn't dream of being like um, a film critic. But then I've been watching a lot of films uh, when I was um, when I was young, and I'm still watching films. And at some point uh, in my career, my young career, I mean, uh, I was like, is there a way to being for being paid um, for watching <laughs> films? And uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so I guess, I mean, I, I went in, into that and I belong to this generation of like um, of, of film lovers and cinephiles in, uh, in Paris uh, who um, managed to catch everything uh, thanks to DVDs and uh, who managed to discuss about films on internet, uh, on mm -hmm. forums. And that's how I, um, I uh, learn how to put two sentences together to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to, to write about film, to talk about films and things like that. Um, I think one of the uh, main accomplishments in, in Sciences Po is, is that you can, when you do that, you can talk about everything or you can pretend that you can talk about uh, <laughs> things you don't know about. So that's yeah, how- Yeah, politics. I, yeah, politics, I got into. <laughs> so I made an internship in, the, in this um, magazine called the Zara Cuptible uh, in, uh, in Paris. And then, well, writing for like a different, um, different outlets. I'm still independent uh, um, as, a, as, a, as a film critic. Um, I write for, uh, I used to write for Zara Rock, um, and now I'm writing um, for Liberation. Um, I'm the specialist, specialist sorry, um, of obituaries. Uh, mm -hmm. So when someone uh, dies in the cinema world, I mean, most of the time, I'm, I'm the person who, who writes uh, about her or him and tries to like um, squeeze yeah. her, her, his life into like uh, one page. And um, I'm also a programmer in different um, festivals. And for me, it's like um, an extension of my uh, of my job as a film critic. So you have to. Share a taste, defend, uh, defend, uh, defend a filmmaker, defend some films, and uh, yeah, uh, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, great. It's fascinating to me that at Liberation, your like one of your titles, it is literally being the guy who writes about film people dying. Like that's a dedicated section of the magazine. That's so cool because I feel like in most other places, I mean, maybe it's just in England or whatever. Um, there's just, you know, we get someone to be like, oh, write about this person. Like, it's fine. And there's not, there's not like someone who's, that's their expertise. And I think that's great because you, you know, being able to condense someone's entire of into one little thing is, is a skill. So that's cool. Well, I'm not, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not the only one who writes obituaries like in, in Iberation. I'm more or less the guy who can write make up something in two hours uh, before the, before, <laughs> before the day, the day. And so you have to, you know, actually, I see. You know, I practical and, and 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 yeah and squeeze everything or try to squeeze everything in in one or two pages yeah and you also like i was saying in the intro you also appear on uh, canal plus sometimes on uh Le yeah then, yeah i started on um uh, uh, to appear on, um, on a tv show called the cirque i mean uh, 
I began like um, some some weeks ago, um, uh, some months ago, before mm-hmm. the before the lockdown and before all the uh, venues uh, were locked down in uh, or closed in, um, in in Paris. And yeah, it's a TV show about um, film critics uh, like uh, discussing uh, all together. What a concept! Which, yeah, which sounds a bit. <laughs> <laughs> boring like, uh, no. like uh, when you when you when you mentioned that but we try to be like um how can i say um yeah we try to to be passionate we try to teach some 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 stuff each one of us has more or less like um, a part you know like uh, yeah. there's the there's a guy who's more or less like the university teacher there's the person who doesn't like uh, uh anything and i think <laughs> i was like recruited to make some jokes uh, and, and well i mean i don't know if it works there's so a key the, part though the humor the touch of humor is very important yeah i mean yeah especially <laughs> like in a in a in a, in a, in a job like us. i mean you have to be fun but not to be like uh, mm-hmm. fun but without being um, uh, mean or like or, or yeah. like naughty for, 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 for nothing so uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. just like the again just like you said, your title is to write the obituaries for film people. You have a TV show in France where a bunch of critics get together and people watch that. Like, it's amazing. I feel like in the UK, we have a few things like that, you know, the BBC or whatever, but it's not it's not really like bringing together a ton of critics regularly to talk about new releases and old films yeah. and all that. Like, that seems to me to be a reflection of the cinephile culture in France, which, you know, it is legendary. People talk about it maybe in romantic terms, like maybe it's not mm-hmm. so much the case anymore. But to me, it seems every time I go to Paris, it seems like cinemas are busy. You know, people go to the cinema yeah. a lot and they mm-hmm. love it. And it's just a part of their life. And it's not um, it's not like a exceptional event, you know, every other mm-hmm. weekend, once a month or something. It's a... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I envy that so much. And I'm well, French and I'm here. I don't know why. I'm here. What did I do? I don't know. Anyway. But you have the you have the BFI, I mean, I mean, which makes good that is true. great things, like great festivals and, uh, and events. So yeah. I mean, you should be lucky. Yeah, and we have the BFI. Across the pond, I mean we, we tend to uh to to envy and to fantasize about the BBC and about the the, the British um public television, uh, yeah. which seems to, to to make a better uh job than our like public television so you know uh, yeah it's a different system i guess but they both have their mm-hmm. advantages and defaults so yeah cool um so now to get into the nitty-gritty of what we're talking about today so you chose to talk about maggie chong yeah um, why yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> why <laughs> why yeah it's it's a line from uh Irma Vep, why a chinese uh, pourquoi une chinoise? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why this actress <laughs> I mean, it was like um, ma- uh, some reasons it was an excuse because uh, I mean this year we, we were supposed I think to celebrate properly the 20th anniversary of the release of In the Mood for Love. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Indeed, it was like um, yeah, screened like 20 years ago in in Cannes, and we were like fantasizing about dressing up uh, for eating Chinese noodle soup in Cannes in May. Oh, it didn't. Ha- yeah, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't <laughs> Did happen. not happen. No. Can was not the same thing this year. No, no, it didn't happen at all. And uh, and there's like a, there's a Wong Kar Wai revival coming up with uh, all these uh, new releases in 4K restoration and, and stuff. Yeah, but I think it was a, amazing. A, it was like a manner for me to celebrate uh, Maggie. And I've seen, I saw this list. I mean, you may have seen it. Um, Best actor and actresses by the New York Times. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't remember what what number she ranked. Uh, she was not there. No. And that's why I'm here to actually correct something. <laughs> I see. No, she wasn't there because, I mean, I saw that there were two actresses, like two Asian actresses there. And there was like uh, Zhao Tao, who's the muse of uh, the Chinese uh, filmmaker Jia Zanke. Mm-hmm. And there was like Kim Min Hee, um, yeah. the muse, like the, the regular actress for like Hong Sang Soo, like great actresses, like um, yeah. major artists. But uh, I was like, they're fine, but they're just... They, they, they are in the, um, some kind of comfort zone, like in the specific cinema of the filmmaker. I mean, uh, Zhao Tao, she's in the Jia Zhongke thing, the zone. Uh, Kim Min Hee, she's in the Hong Sang Soo Korean zone. And then I think that, from what I know, they've never like um, uh, got out outside. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to think of like a major, a global Asian superstar, uh, Asian yeah. icon actress like and some someone who can do like everything 
someone who is not uh, who is not Asian American, for example. Mm. I was thinking of someone like Michelle Yeoh. Uh, she's doing Star Trek these days. I mean, uh, she's uh, she's working a lot, but she's mostly like um, not to dismiss her. Like uh, she's an action star, and mm-hmm. I was like, what happened to Maggie Chan? I mean, in to 2000, I mean, she could have been everything. She had everything. I mean, she's a, she's a wonderful actress. She's obviously good looking. Uh, she speaks like um, very good English, which is like- She uh, speaks so many languages. Like- Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. She's- um, It's insane. In, in Santa Stage, she speaks Mandarin, Shanghainese, and Cantonese. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. just, I mean, I can't really tell the difference between the languages because I don't know them, but I read that and I mean, amazing. She's because I think she was raised partly in England. Yeah, she spent um, her like her youth in in, uh, in England, and she always says in interviews that she doesn't. Every time she goes somewhere, I mean, she doesn't fit or she doesn't belong uh, the place. I mean, when she was like, uh, when she um, came back to Hong Kong after spending some time in uh, in England, I mean, she felt like a foreigner, and then she. She went to, uh, after some years in Hong Kong, she went to, to France, I mean, to spend some time in France, marry uh, a, a French filmmaker, Olivia Sayas, and everything. So um, I like the fact that she's um, some kind of transnational uh, yeah. actress. I, can, I would say. She's very fluid. I mean, she could have moved everything. I think that's one of the jokes in, uh, in, uh, in Irma Vep uh, by Olivia Sayas at the end. I mean, they, they fire her, but she's she's she has already disappeared she's always yeah. uh she moved on something else uh an interview with a with a scott i remember so um yeah. and then she just like after 2000 after 2004 after um she got the the, the prize for best actress in Cannes for queen just vanished she's doing yeah. a Greta Garbo thing. I mean, she's she's fine. I mean, she's uh she's not like ill or or anything. She just mm. um she chose to disappear. Yeah, uh, it's very interesting. I don't know if she gave any explanations, but yeah, it seems it's interesting to. That reminds me uh, in the film, in Center Stage, yeah. where she plays, she it's a biography of this famous uh. Chinese Chinese actress who I'm Chinese in actress mm-hmm. yeah yeah and and they the film is very cool because it um so it's a you know kind of a straight biography where mm-hmm. she plays this this actress this real life person mm-hmm. but then it's interspersed with moments when we see the the filmmaking crew having discussions about yeah. those people and we see her mm-hmm. talk about the character she's playing and from the beginning we know that uh, this woman that she's playing mm-hmm. eventually killed herself yeah. when she was 25 and Maggie Chung is asked you know if she would do that if life got difficult and mm-hmm. all that and she explains very well that the reason why this actress is now a legend is because she disappeared at her peak mm-hmm. and it's interesting because it kind of seems like you know obviously Maggie Chung is alive but she kind of did that herself she left when she was at her full powers yeah. and doing amazing stuff and it's interesting, but at the same time, it feels like, because, like you were saying, because she's so fluid and she could do everything, she did everything. So maybe she was like, I'm done. I've done everything I could do, and I want to do, like, whatever. I think she said she wanted to do paintings or whatever. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Do... Mm-hmm. I think, uh, and there's a wonderful line in Center Stage when the, she says, um, when the, um, um, Stanley Kwan, like the, 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 the director, uh, asked her, I mean, would you like to be remembered in, uh, in 50 years? And she's like, no, I mean, I don't care. And yeah. I like the film that, uh, in a way, I mean, it's of course a biopic, but it's so um, so documentary uh, about, um, of course, like the, the actress uh, running you, but also about Maggie Chung. And you see that there's no vanity in her. I mean, uh, mm. it was there. I mean, if you need an explanation about why or she just disappeared or why she just vanished, it's just that. I mean. Uh, she was not vain at all. I mean, uh, and as you said, I mean, after um, uh, winning prizes in Berlin for Center Stage and, uh, and in Cannes for like um, for for Queen, I mean, she she was at the at the top of the um, of um, uh, of her power. So um, mm. uh, uh, she was at the peak uh, of her career. I mean, she as she said that that she couldn't have done um, better after that. She just disappeared to um, to to stop and to yeah to to fade yeah. away. 
yeah, that's it's great. Beautiful. I mean, uh, it's yeah. beautiful, I think. <laughs> yeah. And um, so when's the first time you noticed Maggie Chung? Obviously, like in, uh, in the Jackie Chan uh, film, action films, um, Police Story 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And she plays this, like, this very annoying like, girlfriend, like funny, uh, funny, yeah. like, uh, funny quirky um, um, chick. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, that's the word for it, I think. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, and then after that, I mean, I saw her like, in, in different films. I mean, uh, she plays in this uh, superhero um, Hong Kong film, um, Heroic Trio. Uh, she plays with uh, Nisha Yeo and, uh, and uh, Anita Moy. And she's cool into that. Uh, she's like, um, she, she has this uh, very um, down to earth uh, quality, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. She's beautiful and everything. And then center stage, like, uh, uh, of course, drama, um, dramatic power, wonderful and everything. And I like the way she evolved, like in a very organic way. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the Wong Kar Wai um, films, uh, there's, a, there's a shot in uh, uh, Day of Being, Being Wild by Wong Kar Wai. You just see the back of the neck of Maggie Chung and the back of the neck is so expressive, uh, mm. uh, so meaningful. And then, of course, in the book Fall Off, and which is like uh, sums up everything. Yeah. Uh, she was like what twenty dresses in the film, like uh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> sexy, silky, like high colored. How can it's... you walk into that? I'm asking you. How can you walk in? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not. You know, my modeling days are behind me, and there's a reason. Like I'm not tight dresses and stuff are not my thing. But she rocks it so well. Yeah. Like that. It's funny, there's actually a moment in In the Mood for Love where a character is like, why does she, does she dress up all yeah, the time? Yeah. Like she's going mm-hmm. nowhere. And it's true. But I think it plays into the character. You know, the, the woman, the wife always waiting for her husband, you know, with literally nothing else to do. I mean, she does have a job, but she's a secretary. So mm-hmm. even secretaries, you know, they they tend to have to look presentable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, Wonka went really far with that. He was like, I want this film to look hot as hell. And it does. But yeah. Um, and you saw the film, and she she just doesn't move. She glides in yeah. all these colliders. I mean, or in these stairways. I mean, how 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 do you do that? I mean, how can you do that? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, she has this very um, silent film quality uh, in in, uh, in in the mood for love. I mean, she doesn't speak much, of course. I mean, it, it's part of the film, and everything is on the, on the face. And she, but it's very modern at the same time, and she has this um, high fashion model quality. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, of uh, of course like a one car uh, one car white film, and yeah, I mean, I think it's like um, if you have a, if you have never seen a, a Maggie Chung film, I mean, it's a good entry to um, to, um, to 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 her career uh, with that film, and to be like to be um, to be fascinated by her. I mean. Mm. She doesn't do much. I mean, she just like uh, she goes. Uh, she goes outside to to catch some noodle soup uh, uh, to take away. She walks, blah blah, blah and she's yeah. longing for something for love, who has been lost. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the first Maggie Chung film I saw, mm-hmm. and but I saw it for the first time a few years ago now, like a, a while, mm. and I was kind of confused by it because I just didn't get the because the film is very romantic you know there's all this slow motion Mm -hmm. it's really about longing and you know elongating moments to see what happens in them you know i mean that there's a line where tony long who's beautiful as well by the way uh tony long says uh that feelings just creep up on you without you noticing and i think that's really what the film is about you know with Mm -hmm. this slow motion Mm -hmm. you see moments that are simple you know just two people crossing each other in the corridor but you see that there that's where they're catching feelings without not realizing and i think when i first saw it i was too young to get the subtleties of that i was kind of like just get on with it what's going on like just kiss or whatever (laughs) but it's not obviously that's not what the film is about but rewatching it for this i i found her like you're saying there's a silent film quality that she nails and she does the same in obviously center stage where Mm. where the character she plays the woman she plays was a silent film actress so yeah i think you need an actress who's very expressive but subtle 
or something like that. You know, in the mood for love could be really annoying if she was, you know, sobbing the whole time or whatever. Yeah. She's very delicate. Yeah, in the mood for love, I mean, uh, Wonka Wai got cuts a lot of, uh, like, a lot of fat from the film. I mean, it, it cuts some scenes, like uh, what happened in the, um, in the hotel room, uh, 246. Mm. It shot like uh, an alternate ending when the... Um, Tony Lung and uh, and Maggie Chung like uh, uh, meet again like some years ago in Cambodia. And yeah. then when you and I mean this since I've been shot, I mean you can find them on DVDs and when you see them it's disappointing. Like uh, there's mm. no mystery. And the film right. like, in itself is um is, is very fine because uh, you have to fill the gap by yourself. There's a lot of gaps like, mm. like um things which are not say um, a lot of ellipses so uh, so yeah. yeah and it's mostly a film about people avoiding uh, each other for like uh, for most of the film yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they're very rarely together no. in a way and and yet there's so much there because like it's true actually there's a lot of scenes of them by themselves yeah which is very difficult in you know acting wise like to act alone is hard because you have nothing to you have no one to react to, mm -hmm. but they're amazing in that because they are playing loneliness and, you know, longing, which is fitting, but that is not easy. And she makes it beautiful. I love the scene where she knocks at the door of yeah. her, um, how do you say it? The the landlady. Yeah. 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 Landlady, yeah. And she's not there. And, and it's the wife of Tony Long that opens, I think. Mm -hmm. And we just see her and she says so little. She just says, oh, I wanted to talk to her. Yeah. But we see so much happening in her face and it's subtle because she's trying not to look sad, but obviously mm -hmm. she's very sad. It's a moment where she really, I, my understanding is that she's really understood that her husband is not being faithful yeah. mm -hmm. and she feels like she wants to talk to anyone, even her landlady who's a bit annoying, whatever. She just wants to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And it's so, it's so subtle and so beautiful. And yeah, she's, she's gorgeous. And the, I like the contrast between how... Because it's a film also about keeping up appearances, yeah. and they can't they can't show that yeah. they're start they're starting to have something together. Her and Tony Long, and she can really play that double acting thing if you want, where she's very correct when people are around, but mm -hmm. when she's when when the the wife of Tony Long closes the door, she like looks down and she's bro breaking down. It's it's so subtle, it's so beautiful in a film that is so tight. You know, like you were saying, there's so many moments that kind of, you know, surprise you like that because they're so not controlled. Yeah. And then there's a lot of scenes, I mean, they're together in a frame, but they don't look at each other. They're just like looking yeah. away or like looking at the plates or looking at something else. Mm. So they're together, but, uh, but, um, but alone at the same time, it's, it's very beautiful. Yeah. And, and yeah, so it's a, obviously a great film. And then yeah. she did these two films in, in France, like uh, with Olivia Sayas, I mean, and she, she moved away. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, of course, Irma Vep was shot before in the Mood for Love. Uh, it was shot like uh, before, the, um, uh, before she, was, she became famous uh, in, uh, in France. But um, and that's, that's how, I mean, uh, uh, like, um, uh, I discovered that she was like transnational, like pretty fluid. Like, uh, it's a very clever idea to, uh, uh, from from Asayas uh, to, um, to to cast her in uh, Irma Vep, mm. like taking this Chinese actress like as herself, and at the same time, uh, most of us I mean uh, have never seen her before like um, uh, in a film. So she's playing herself, but you you don't know who is who she is. In fact, I mean, yeah. And I like the fact that she's like she's thrown in this like um, context of um, French cinema, like. Uh, <laughs> Chaotic. <laughs> yeah, like this um, what I mean, English uh, expression, uh, like a bug in a china shop. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> an elephant in a china shop? Uh, bull. Yeah, I can have something an animal. <laughs> yeah, I think the yeah, maybe it's bull. Is, it's a bull. Elephant is in French, maybe. no? You can say in French, yeah, if you know. Yeah, you but mean. we okay, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's an animal. We're both French, so I can't, I can't save you here. I just expressions, no. Big animal <laughs> in a huge animal, huge beast in a in a in a china shop, and uh, yeah, I think it's bull. I think it's bull. It's a bull, yeah, especially <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, especially like in French cinema. I mean, in this vision of French cinema, um, mm. in a film which has a very um, high idea of itself. Yeah. Uh, um, throwing like uh, uh, an Asian, like a um, Hong Kong um, um, star in a context of um, of, um, of a cinema who's like um, longing uh, for the um, for the for the golden age of silent film, new wave, and everything. Mm. And um, it was shot in ninety six, like ninety six, ninety seven, yeah. right? Yeah. At the time when we had this um, uh, called uh, thing called GATT, the General Agreement of uh, on Trade. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, maybe you were too young at the time, but um, I was three years old. Yeah, <laughs> but I've heard of it. <laughs> but it was like the, at the time there was there was a huge discussion about um, about. French exception, uh, right, and everything. There was, you know, uh, you were too young to saw it. I mean, to to remember this time when something like Jurassic Park in ninety three, ninety four, like in France, was considered as like a some kind of imperialist uh, uh, <laughs> thing. I see. Yeah, and um, and it's very interesting. I mean, it's very clever for Masayas. I mean, to uh, to to use uh, to use Maggie Chan. Uh, as that into that uh, context of um, mm. existential crisis in culture, and um, and um, and he cinema. has he has Jean Pierre Leo drinking Coca Cola throughout as well. Yeah, <laughs> which uh, is really funny. Uh, I, I don't know how. I mean, I, I think that the scene was improvised. I mean, she said uh, she said in an interview that uh, she was like um, talking to him in the scene, and then just moved away like to take this bottle of Coke. It was not scripted. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, it was like rehearsed, and um, she said, "Yeah, I mean, uh, um, it was the first time that uh, she was uh, she had to deal with someone improving like that, like and not like just improving a little, changing a line, right? Or something, improvising, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, improvising. Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and improving, <laughs> yeah, and improving, improving <laughs> by improvising, improvising by improving, and uh, yeah, it just like uh, went, uh, it went away to take the the, the coke and uh, and went back." And uh, keeping the lines wow. and everything, and uh, classic French new wave move, you know, like classic improvising. Thing, you know, <laughs> but, you, uh, but yeah, yeah, and uh, I didn't think about the signification of the of the of the Coke, um, Coca Cola, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh. But it's it's so funny because it's like a close up on him, and it's like an advertising. Where he's drinking like this. <laughs> it's like. It feels a bit off, you know, but it, in the context of the film, it, it makes total sense, yeah. And of course, uh, about the subtext, I mean, you can, of course, think of Godard, uh, Coca-Cola, the Chinese, uh, and everything. So, I mean, there's a lot of cross-references in that scene and in the film. Uh, yeah, and, uh, totally. In, in general. But, I love um, how, in that film, she really, again, because she's cast as herself, hmm? playing a character, Yeah. we get to see, just like in Center Stage, but even more, we get to see her just being herself mm -hmm. and she seems to be such a genuine a good-hearted person yeah mm -hmm. and then she can switch into her acting mode and like that's my one of my favorite things to see in in films that are a bit different like that is to see an actor like preparing and then doing it you know yeah. kind of like uh dicaprio in once upon a time in hollywood it's mm -hmm. just so much fun and she's an expert at that like the the scene where this kind of creepy co-star she has is rehearsing yeah. with her mm -hmm. And she's totally serious, but he's obviously trying to like flirt with her, whatever. But it's beautiful. She's so on point and she can turn it on like that. And being able to be yourself when you're filmed within a film, that must be weird, I think. And she does this, she's done that at least twice, you know, in center stage and in, in my web. Yeah, and in, in my lab, I mean, she's there's that scene where like uh, she she steals some jewels like in some hotel room in a way yeah. to to get into the character of um, of uh, Irma Vep, this like uh, mm -hmm. this criminal, and it's um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing, beautiful uh, scene, like an actress trying to get into the character. I mean, uh, and trying to have some fun uh, and into that. And yeah. Even before that, when the, she goes to the um, to the apartment of the director of Jean Pierre Leo, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a, there was an argument. Uh, police came, fireman and everything. And when she has to um, uh, to uh, to go outside, I mean, she she jump through the window like, like yeah. a character. 
So it's fun. I noticed that, and I thought that was such a nice, subtle touch to show, you know, a, an actor working, essentially preparing. So and, nice. uh, yeah, and I like the way that at the end, everybody is so mean uh, with her. I mean, when they don't need her, I mean, they have to uh, uh, read away. Uh, yeah, read they away. get rid of her so quickly. Yeah, yeah, quickly. But then, I mean, she has already moved on. Uh, hey, I'm going to LA, to New York. I have a meeting with uh, with Willie Scott. Fuck you. Yeah. So. <laughs> Maybe this is, as I asked, commenting on the, um, you know, Paris and you know the French cinema industry being super cynical and cold-hearted and yeah I feel like he does that quite often like I mean even Carlos Sales Maria is a bit about that you know he's yeah. a very self-aware yeah he's very self-aware I mean he's, he's a very interesting character um, like a very interesting director uh, in France especially um, because I mean uh, of course he knows about French cinema I mean he knows about the other tropes the history and everything but um, these films, uh, the best of them, never feel French because they try to be transnational, try tend to be fluid, mm. uh, like Sus Maria with um, uh, with uh, Jim Stewart, with uh, like um, Personal Shopper, even Demon, yeah. Demon Lover uh, or Boarding Gate, even if Boarding Gate is, um, well, has uh, some uh, flaws, but um, but yeah, I mean, he tries to be is aware of the the, the the heritage of the new wave and everything. And he tries to uh, to um, to um, to to squeeze that. I mean, or to, uh, to, uh, to to play on that, to subvert that uh, yeah. by uh, you know, like um, working with a lot of foreign actors, actresses, uh, putting a lot of rock and roll uh, stuff in, in his film. So yeah, he's a very interesting character, a very interesting director, and uh, and that's why Yamavet works uh, so much because of that and because of Maggie Chan. Yeah. And it's interesting, interesting also that in Imavep, the crew at some point has a chat about how they don't understand why Jean-Pierre Leo's character yeah. is remaking yeah. uh, Les Vampires. Les Vampires, yeah. And now Olivier Sayas is making a TV show of Imavep. Yeah, it's very <laughs> and, uh... You know, and I'm like, what did, didn't you say in <laughs> Imavep that remaking stuff is bad? Or, but maybe he's changed his mind. But in the meantime, I mean, it did Carlos, which was like, uh, which was, uh, which was a TV series. Even yes. uh, at the same time, uh, it says that it's not a TV series; it's just like a film, like a long film. But um, oh, it's the whole Twin Peaks argument. Yeah, the, you know, the whole <laughs> argument about like filmmakers saying, "No, I'm not doing a series. I'm doing a, a twelve a long... hour, a six hour, <laughs> yeah. um, a six hour film." Um, yeah. yeah, and it's is um, in the in the series. I mean, they have uh, the Alicia Vikander as the yeah, uh, which is like um, interesting. I mean, she's a nice actress, mm. not as uh, but in terms of uh, casting, it's not as I think um, it's not as um, uh, shocking or groundbreaking um, as um, uh, as Maggie Chung, I think. Yeah, I would I mean, say she's yeah, American, right? Alicia Vikander. Swedish. Uh, oh, yeah, true. She's Swedish. But uh, I would say that it's, again, like another white actress. Uh, you know, yeah, like, um, but, indeed. Yeah. Uh, and it seems that uh, in the context of the series, it's more about um, how, how, the, how the, uh, the frontiers between fiction and reality mm. tends to blur. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's... Uh, uh, it's not so much a commentary or on... a commentary about like um, filmmaking uh, or like or doing a film right. uh, as in uh, the Asayas uh, film. I don't know. I mean, uh, we, mm. we can pray, we can hope that it would be yeah. uh, better than that. But um, yeah. Let us see. Mm. Let us see. And um, now to talk about you a bit. Uh, <laughs> you're, also, um, you're also a programmer, yeah. right? And you've programmed La Semaine de la Critique yeah. in Cannes. Yeah. And now you're in charge of the short films. Is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. Um, how can I have any insights about how that works and how do you look for that? Because you said it's an extension of your work as a critic. Yeah. So how exactly does that play out for you? Um, well, it's the same uh, in the sense that I'm working with other um, uh, programmers, like um, people in the session mm -hmm. committee, so who they're also film critics. So they discuss. We like to discuss, uh, yeah. talk about the films. Like in the circle, uh, but um, 
uh, obviously, I think we uh, you pick a film, and I'm I mostly dealt with young filmmakers, like uh, um, people who haven't made uh, features before, or like mm -hmm. or people who made like one or two features. So it's more risky than you know picking the new Almodova, the new Asayas, yeah. or the new anything. And um, so you you I think uh, the you have to be more risky or, or braver than uh, than a film critic. Right. Every film that you see as a film critic that appears in some kind of context. It was in a festival. There was a buzz. There was a, you know mm. there was something. People have already discussed about the film. And when yeah. you see like a young filmmaker coming coming up on um, on your screener, like on your laptop, on an iPad, in your bathroom. <laughs> I've seen How do you some, know? I've How do you seen, know that? I've seen some <laughs> I've seen some like like a great film in a in a bathroom <laughs> in an iPad. Uh, and you have to be, you know, you have to be um you have to be uh, sharp and you have to be uh, receptive. Uh, but at the same time you don't know when you pick the film, uh, when you show, I mean when the film is shown in the world, I mean how uh, how will the people react? Uh, yeah like uh you like the nurse like uh taking away like the baby from uh from from the mother and you show the you show the baby to the world and yeah is it beautiful is it ugly <laughs> oh i prefer like the this metaphor i'm the i'm the wine guy in a restaurant like the the maître the the the, 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 yeah. the, the sommelier i open the yeah. bottle pop <laughs> young yeah. is it you know to something like uh, trop de tannin or so, yeah. And <laughs> you never know, you never know. So I think, right. and I feel that there's more responsibility like, mm. uh, in, in, in the job um, of um, programming. There's more responsibility. There's the same dedication, I think. And mm. maybe it's harder because you have to, you know, it's a great film, I, uh, I can tell you. Mm. It's the time it works. Uh, and, um, and then you know, those filmmakers like, um, go up and everything and they forget you. And <laughs> <laughs> they just leave. They just leave. Yeah, they move away. I mean, they are kids. You know, they like kids, yeah. like um, teenagers. They move away. So, so yeah. Um, and uh, of course, you don't. Uh, the difference uh, with um, being a film critic, of course, there's the whole issue of the industry. Mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. You know, uh, because you know, when you're a film critic, yeah, I, I'm untouchable. You know. I'm Mm. I don't listen to everything, but then when you um, when you when you work for a festival, there is this festival context. There is an industry buzz. You know, mm. you should pick that one because uh, because it's uh, you know it's the new talent. So maybe yeah. it's uh, maybe it's uh, you know you pick the film for wrong reasons, like mm. just because it's the is the. The director, it's the, the one you know, should pick. Yeah, or he, she's hot now, and uh, and it would be better with the with the next film. Mm. So, um, but so, yeah, isn't because Cannes is so huge though. Like yeah. when you work, when you do that for Cannes, mm. don't you kind of have the? Don't you get to be the first festival to pick those people? So maybe you have less of the influence of that industry, or am I wrong? And it's actually as bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, you, you may have like, uh, you, where the, the difference, I mean, for me, I work in Semen de la Critique, which is like a section in Cannes. So it's mm -hmm. like a festival inside another festival and it's like a Russian doll. You have, yeah. you, you have everybody, you know, say, say it's Cannes, like Berlin or like everything, but then you have to open the door and there's another door, uh, inside, like, uh, un certain regard, you open it, uh, that was Fortnite. You open again, like, um, and we all, we of course we're friendly with each other, but we compete with uh, with the others. I compete right. with directors Fortnite uh, because uh, of uh, mutual tastes, and I compete with uh, you know, with the official section. When right. the films are good, when the films are good, everybody wants them. So I compete mm. with them inside, uh, inside the box. Uh, wow. Outside, outside that, of course, the other festivals like Locarno, Berlin, um, it's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. but um but yeah and and the can can context and to maybe to um uh it's a kind of lens and things tend to be like um, 
oversized like uh, mm. because of that yeah because you always say it's a film for can and <laughs> no i mean it's a good film but maybe it's it's for like a smaller festival right where like the film will be like um we have mm. a better a proper reception mm. we'll have more space most more space can is yeah. very busy everybody mm. is like you know like it tends to uh to um, to uh to, to focus on the um, on the on the famous filmmakers and on the stars and mm. If you want yeah. to push like a young on the Tarantino, or... yeah, I mean yeah. there's a narrative in Cannes. I mean, uh, and if you manage to squeeze like the your film, like uh, your young female in the narrative, it's fine. But you only have like um, one week and a half uh, for mm. that, with the first week, the first weekend, because then after, I mean, everybody has already left, uh, right. everybody's gone, everybody's too so tired. So I should come the first week. Yeah, because sometimes I don't week. know. <laughs> yeah. Because second week everybody's you know half sleeping in the in the in the venue yeah. uh, during the screening and then uh, and then they were, the film ends they wake up and they clap. And, <laughs> I know I've seen that. <laughs> you know I mean you've been there so you know you know you know what it is. Uh, I mean when uh, when Uncle Boomy won like the like the, the palm like uh, some years ago it was screened the second week I think. Oh wow! I mean come on that film. <laughs> That Did film you see? in the second week, yeah, <laughs> in the second week, and well, now I mean, there's a uh, people are praising the virtues of sleeping in a, in during a film. Happy Chapong said that you can That's sleep true. during a film. I think I saw uh, Christian Martel said you can do you can do like uh, like um, like doing a film. It's fine. It's part of the experience. So, okay. So I fell asleep the first time I saw Zama by Lucretia Marta, so yeah. that's okay. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> it's a wonderful film, but but it yeah. Is. But then again, when you watch films in Canada, I mean, you have to um, you have to watch them again. I always watch them again. Uh, with, okay. Uh, without the can cloak or the can shadows uh, or the can uh, uh, the can context, because mm. uh, a lot it of does make a big difference. Improve. Yeah, a lot of a lot of, a lot of films improve after. After like two weeks in Cannes, I think, uh, because mm. you don't see you don't see them without a rush or without um, without uh, without being tired. So uh, I see. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Now that we talked about Cannes, I want to talk about more, a bit more about the wider context of cinephilia in France, because yeah. to me that's the thing that I feel like I'm missing out on mm -hmm. completely. Uh, so, like I said, I'm French, and I I'm in London, um, and I've never actually written reviews in French mm. somehow. Mm. Um, but more importantly, I'm not in the French context of mm -hmm. cinephilia. And mm. I mean, how, when you grew up in France, like, did you go to the cinema often? Was that a thing? Like, is that, is that how you got to be a cinephile as well? Like, was that something that, that was, you were kind of like the w weird one who liked movies or was it like everybody liked movies? I think we were very lucky in France because we can see everything on TV. Uh, yeah. I mean, there was this, uh, when I was a kid, when when everybody was young, there was this um, cinéma de minuit in uh, on the third channel on France 3. Right. These black and white films, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, technical Hollywood stuff, which was shown like in, at midnight on uh, mm. on um, on, uh, on Sunday. So you, I had to tape them on my VCR. And then uh, in France, I mean in Paris especially, I mean, you have all these uh, cinemas like showing everything. I mean, yeah. Like from the from the oldies to any obscure uh, Serbian or Croatian uh, stuff, Thai film, everything is picked um, every week. I mean, before, uh, yeah, before now. <laughs> I mean, each week was like busy with films. Uh, most of them didn't have uh, much chance to exist after after two weeks. So, uh, I, I, yeah, of course, I'm weirder than the average. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I didn't mean that in a bad way. Huh? No, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, in a, in a good way. I'm with than, uh, than, uh, than, um, than the average film, uh, film, yeah. Film goer. Yeah, goer. Mm. Uh, and I had the chance, you know, to, to, um, how can I say, I mean, uh, in the, in, the, um, in 2000 and everything, when you have, you have the DVDs and you could, you can see, you could see everything. Mm -hmm. Like uh, things which were like uh, uh, legendary and never seen everything. Then it showed uh, it, it showed up on DVD, and now it's mm 
pretty difficult uh, for like um, for French publishers to uh, uh, French DVD publishers to uh, to issue something like uh, you know like never seen or something very rare because everything yeah. uh, everything uh, has been shown everything everything has been seen I mean yeah it's, now it's mostly restorations yeah now it's the restoration uh, now any like. Uh, second rate 80s film is considered as a as a as a classic so uh so yeah yeah so uh yeah we we i think we in france i mean we uh, we are very lucky to 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 have access to uh, to to mm. everything to, to to most of it and uh, we have a lot of platforms of course i mean uh we have uh, of course we have newbie i mean you have newbie we do. Uh, yeah, we, we do, of course. Uh, so is it uh, very popular in France? I can I cannot tell about the numbers, but uh, I think yeah. I mean, among the the hardcore um, right. uh, film lovers, it uh, it's 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 fine. I think maybe uh, the the offer is um, well, the offer is different, like uh, uh, mm. uh, in in countries, like according to the rights. Uh, yeah. Uh, of the films, I think that you can see a lot of. Godard films on Mubi outside France. Um, yeah, we have them often on Mubi UK. Yeah, but in France now they're on Netflix. So uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> How did he say yes to that? Uh, That's crazy. Because uh, you know, like uh, MK2, like um, and other like uh, um, other, uh, other right yeah. holders, like so the rights. I mean, at some at some point, I mean, uh, wow, you, you have the. You had the Truffaut, you had the Varda on the, on Netflix, and you know Netflix. I mean, wow. if people don't That's tell surreal. you uh, that uh, they exist, well, you you, you have that. Yeah. So, um, well, just imagine like Netflix and chill with Jean Luc Godard. It's just <laughs> like surreal. <laughs> That's amazing, though. I mean, yeah, you know, with all the caveat of Netflix being Netflix, but yeah. the the point of access is important. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, that's cool. So that's right. yeah, and this, and especially in that context now, I mean, the issue of mm. platforms like is very important now. I mean, uh, in Liberation, we are like when there's no film to uh, there's no film to review in a, in, a, in a cinema, so you have to um, you have to check everything on Amazon, on Netflix, Newbie, on um, Cinetech, uh things like that, and to to spot uh, what's uh, what's going on. So, um, mm. so yeah, yeah, it's the same here. Let's hope it gets better at some point let's hope so yeah mm -hmm. yeah all right well this was great um i hope that you had uh... yeah this is perfect this is exactly the right length we talked about so many things we talked about maggie we talked about french cinema we talked about uh jean-luc godard so it's great <laughs> netflix even yeah. so please people i mean see uh center stage by uh by stanley Kwan with maggie chung this is this this is the french edition uh, oh you have a french blu-ray or something no, it's a uh, it's a DVD. All right, okay. Just a DVD, but uh, mm. but beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it is uh, a great film. I really enjoyed it. It's no. it's quite long, and I wish I had seen it in you know in a cinema or something. But it is it is gorgeous and no, she's it's great beautiful. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. Mm. I feel like I like the um, I like the historical context a bit, but you know I learned something with that. So and there's a lot of good self reflection about um about uh, about. Uh, about what is acting, what acting is, about yeah. the business, you know, with all these interviews and with the fact that, you know, it's a biopic, but at the same time, you saw the making of, you saw the mm. behind the scenes. So, um, it's, it's a great one. And again, yeah. in the mood for love, which will be restored and everything, shown yeah. in, in venues when they open and, and available on Criterion, I think, uh, next, um, next, yeah. next year. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a good time for Maggie Chung. It's a good Revival. time for comfort, uh, comfort food and comfort films. So uh, please <laughs> noodles. Have, like, some noodle soup. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. While uh, while watching a uh, uh, Wonka wife. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to or watching this episode of You Gotta Act. If you wish to know in advance who our next guest will be and ask them a question, become a friend of You Gotta Act on Patreon. See you next time.